docking or parking your boat in a slip in a marina like this one here seems really straightforward and simple. You see the boats here, they're tied off to the pilings or to the bulkhead or the dock. It seems pretty straightforward. You just, you tie it off and you leave your boat sit there. And in some places, for some people, it can be pretty straightforward. But in an area like this one, where we're subject to, to tidal variations, uh, that sometimes can be a few feet up and down, and uh, currents and wind and those types of things, it can be really tricky to secure your boat properly in your slip in the marina. That way you don't have to worry about any number of problems, like for example, your swim platform ending up on the dock because your lines were too loose, or your boat actually being suspended by the lines because the tide has dropped too much. All of those things can happen, and I've seen them happen. To demonstrate why some of the lines that we use are used the way that they are, and why some techniques are better than others, I actually made a scaled down version of my boat and my boat slip in the marina so that I can demonstrate some of the challenges with not tying your boat off properly. All right, so here's my model. This is the water right over here, and the wooden area is my boat slip. So that represents my boat slip, and you can see my four pilings right there. This here, that's the pier. So imagine we walk along that part there, and then that's where I park my boat in the slip. These are my four points. Two closest to the pier might be where I tie off on the pier or pilings next to the pier. And those two out there are the pilings that we tie off to. Here's my boat. So this represents my boat with the cleats that are on my boat. And my boat has six cleats. If I brought my boat in like this and I pulled it in bow first, like a lot of people park their boat, or coming in stern first, like I park my boat, both of those techniques work the same way with how you tie things off. It's just a matter of preference. My boat, because it has a swim platform that's easy to walk on and off of the pier, I like to back in. We want to be able to make easy access to get on and off the boat. So let's talk about how I actually tie this boat off in the slip. These strings here are going to represent my lines. Typically you have a line tied off to the front cleats and then we tie two lines off to the rear cleats. Now for right now, I'm not gonna attach anything to the cleats that are halfway down the side of the boat. So the way a lot of rookies and people who've never boated before will tie off is onto the four corners, because it makes a lot of sense. You've got a cleat there and you've got a tie off point. But there are serious disadvantages to tying off at the corners. And I'm gonna show them to you right now. This foam here represents water. So if we think about the blue of it being the top of the water and this black part being the depth of the water and then the wood there is the bottom of my slip, right? So that's if it was dry. So let's put the water in the boat slip. When I was a new boater, this is how I tied my boat off. So you wanted to make sure that you had your boat far enough away from the pier that it wouldn't hit it or put fenders or bumpers uh, there so that way to be able to protect the boat. So now we have our boat tied off on all four corners. Let's just tighten it up just a little bit, which you have to do a lot of times at the marina as well to, to get it centered in the slip. So where it's tied off in the four corners, if you notice, the boat can swing around from side to side a bit. So in a situation like this, if you're not tightened up, you could bump the boat next to you. So that's why people will put fenders out beside them. But let's look at all the movement that the boat does, back and forward, side to side. So we'll make a couple more adjustments to get the boat a little more secure in the slip. So there's our boat tied off in its slip. If the tide were to go out severely, do you see this? The boat is literally now hanging from where it's tied off on in the slip. If the tide were to go out severely, when you have your boat tied off from the four corners, the boat could literally be suspended from these docking lines. Obviously those lines could break under tension or a cleat could get uh, broken off of your boat. You don't want to have your boat hanging at any point in time. And that's the reason why we do not tie our boats off at the corners because in a severe low tide, the boat could literally be suspended 
by your lines. So a much better method is to cross our lines. So you would take the one from the starboard side and tie it off to the piling on the port side and take from the cleat on the port side, tie it to the piling on the starboard side. So we do that at the front of the boat and then we do that at the back of the boat. So now with these things done in a crisscross pattern, which as you can see, keeps the boat in the slip a lot better from moving side to side. And when I pull the water out, the boat is now resting on the bottom. So no matter how low the tide goes, the boat will not be suspended from your docking lines. Doing this crisscross method, you can allow for much greater variation with tide levels. However, one of the challenges is the forward and back movement of the boat. And as you can see, it can move forward and back quite a bit in the slip. To compensate for that, we use a spring line. And a spring line basically just goes from your outer piling straight down the side to the mid cleat. You use the spring line to maintain spacing between the pier and the edge of your boat. So that way you can use that spring line to keep your boat from getting too close to the pier. And I'll install two of them on my model here so that you can see. In my slip right now, I am actually only using one spring line because that seems to be working just fine. As you can see, the spring line keeps the boat from getting too close to the pier. But if I were to pull the water out, it still allows the boat to go all the way down. Another technique I've seen some people do is they actually measure off exactly the right length of line that they're going to need. They tie it off ahead of time so that way they can just use that loop end on the boat to be able to have it be the exact right length and they're not having to play around with it every time they're coming back in and tying their boat off. I haven't tried that myself yet though, but I think that's kind of a neat idea. I didn't cover all of the aspects of tying our boat off in all different types of situation. This video was just talking about putting it in a slip at a marina the way that I put my boat in my boat slip. If you have some other thoughts, comments, advice, tips or tricks, be sure to share them in the comments below. I'd love to read them. So I hope you found this video helpful. This video here, this is another good video that you should watch next. Check this video out right now. It's a good one.